Hi, it's Iowimala. It is Thursday, November the 19th, and we're having kind of a blustery day here in Crystal Lake, but the sun is out and it's really beautiful. And we went from 30, low 30s earlier in the, the week, and today we're getting up into the 60s. So uh, it's gorgeous, good day for a walk. So Thanksgiving is getting closer. So a week from today, and uh, I, as I was checking in with the news this morning on my phone, I noticed a series of articles that were talking about um, how to turn down Thanksgiving invitations uh, politely. So it, for people who have decided that they're going to stay home and risk putting others and not risk putting others in danger or themselves by gathering outside of their own household. Um, there are so many articles about how to politely turn down the invitations. And I just, I keep thinking about that and think, isn't that strange? So now if you want to stay at home and feel more safe and just uh, have some restraint in your movements, and we know right now that our COVID-19 rates are higher than ever. Um, but now we need to learn how to be graceful and polite and not offend anybody by turning down an invitation. So that just makes me think there is, this is uh, a kind of social pressure I never thought I'd be reading about. So I'd love to know if there are others of you who feel surprised by this kind of uh, encouragement not to be rude to people. Is anybody pressuring anybody? I know I'm not joining my little family, um, and I don't think that anyone will be offended by that. I think they certainly understand what's going on in terms of COVID-19, and I'm the oldest one in that little family group. So I'll just have to play the old card. Sometimes it's a, it, it, there are lots of advantages to being older. <laughs> Sadly, this is an, a weird one to have during this pandemic, to have that kind of advantage. So um, just curious what other people think about that. It just struck me as being, I don't know if it's humorous or if it's, I don't know what meme I would use to respond. Um, but Thanksgiving, we always think about it as uh, a time for gratitude. And this Sunday evening on Zoom, our uh, Faith, Br Faith Bridge Interfaith Group is having a, the, traditionally there's always a service, it's part of the work that that group does, on the Sunday before Thanksgiving. And uh, the last several years, it's been it's been music and art and poetry, and um, it's usually live. And so this is going to be on Zoom. So check it out. I'm sure we we should have a flyer on the Blue Lotus Facebook page, and I'll be sure to get one up on mine. But uh, that's open to everyone, and that's Sunday evening. And the usual, the, the, there is no cost for it, but uh, we encourage people to donate to their food pantries, or they can, if they, if you aren't doing that these days, you can send a check, and that money all goes to uh, certain three or four food pantries in the area here, where that money is dispersed. So there's always something beautiful about the service. Um, Anyway, Bhante Badia and I are going to do a few things on it. I'm going to read some uh, quotes that they, they sent me. They're, my quotes are on gratitude, and Bhante Badia is going to lead a short meditation at the beginning of the, of the group. But there is, there's one quote on my list that I wanted to share because it made me think about gratitude a little bit more. Uh, it's a, that's a beautiful quality, right? Being grateful for, we can be grateful for everything. But this is from Wa Ralph Waldo Emerson. Cultivate the habit of being grateful for every good that comes to you and give thanks continuously. 
and because all things have contributed to your advancement, you should include all things in your gratitude. So I think that's wonderful. I think he was a transcendentalist, uh, if I remember my literature studies well enough. But I think that's a beautiful quote. Because everything does, everything that's been in our world and in our lives have, have contributed to who we are at this moment. So what he's saying is exactly true. Um, the other thought that that led me to was to think, you know, when we talk about mindfulness, we're talking about being in the present moment, living in the present moment, having that uh, awareness of what's going on and seeing it clearly. And we usually don't talk a lot about the past, but gratitude is actually something that goes way back in our past, all the way back, and comes with us right up to, to this very moment. So I think gratitude is one of the ways that we work with the past. And uh, I like what he says, that right up continuously to this moment, everything that's been in our lives has been a part of what has made us who we are. And um, I think we could even use gratitude to look at some of the things that are difficult for us and the things in our past that we feel like we haven't gotten over or that are still uh, weighing us down. And so tr let's try between now and Thanksgiving and then just continue with it, um, looking at things in your past that may not be things that you like to remember or that are pleasant for you, and look to them with an eye of um, seeing how they have contributed to who you are today and being accepting of yourself today, then it can make some of those things in the past Maybe they ha they, you don't see them as being acceptable, but maybe they were part of your strength that helped you get to this place and helped you heal. Uh, maybe some tough lessons, but things that have made you, who've made, made you who you are today that you're proud of. And you can use RAIN, that technique of RAIN, to look at these things so that if you, if it's, if you have something in your past that is hard for you to look at. You can work little bits of time. When you see those things, if you're sitting and something comes to you, or if there's just out of nowhere, you, you remember something or see something that bothers you from your past, or anytime you're practicing and you want to work with some issue that maybe you feel blocked with, RAIN is a beautiful technique. So first when we see, when we're, when we're being quiet and still and we see that past incident or that issue that we, we're not quite sure how much we want to work with it, or it may be one we know we're working with but we want some, a new technique, RAIN is there for us. So we recognize, for the R, the recognition of that issue is very important because a lot of times these are the things that we we don't want to look at we don't want to see and so we're, we're being trying to be intentionally kind of ignorant about it because we're not ready maybe to take it on full full blast but if we sit with it quietly and then recognize maybe there's some old sadness or there's some kind of unfinished business that we think about we can recognize it and feel safe with that recognition. And then the next step is acceptance. So whether it's something we like or not, or something that's painful or not, we can then accept it. Okay, this is real. This was part of my experience. This, this is something that I can, I'm ready to accept. And this is that radical acceptance that we practice. When we're, when we're working with ourselves. We can accept the unacceptable. Well, it's like welcoming the unwelcome, right? It's there, so if we're, maybe it's time to, to go ahead, we've recognized it, now let's accept it. 
And the next step is to investigate. And investigation, when we're talking about it with the Buddhist teachings, investigation is not thinking about it more. Uh, that's thinking is what gets us into trouble in the first place and so thinking and thinking more and more about this situation or this whatever comes up for you thinking about it is not how we investigate it we investigate it by trying to observe it trying to see it from different facets staying with it long enough to try to Maybe see a different point of view from the way you've looked at it before. And if it's something in your past, maybe it's solidified as something um, too painful to look at or too, uh, too hard to look at. And maybe you can investigate by observing it at the distance that you need to have and just looking at it and trying to see trying to see some of the emotional aspects that have gotten caught up with it. Uh, but we don't overthink it. We just stay with it for a while. We don't have to push it away while we investigate. And then the N, we don't have to keep doing that, but we might want to practice RAIN with this particular subject over and over again. But then when we're ready, when we've investigated, we may not have gotten a solution or the answers, but we've discovered that we can, without fear, we can approach the issue. We can see it. We've accepted it. But then we can work with it that way for a while and then come back to uh, nurturing yourself. Sometimes it's called coming back to neutrality, but it's often called uh, nurturing so we can let it go then if it's something that's like a hot coal for us. We don't want to hang on to it and carry it around with us. So we feel that heat and then we can put it down. But we've already, because we've allowed ourselves to get that close to it, we can, then it's almost a, when you do it in your practice and you go back to nurturing in the neutral, back away from that situation you're looking at, you can feel the relief, and I've had people in groups when we've done this say that it was it was really, they really were grateful they could look at it, at this kind of something that may have been, they had intentionally not wanted to look at before. They were glad they could do it, but they really were, that last step of going back to nurturing or neutral ground made them just breathe a sigh of relief. Like, okay, I know now I can come back to this and work with it a little more, investigate a little more. But right now, oh, we need to back away from it. So working with rain, that's a wonderful way to, to uh, work with the past. But I love, I'm gonna read Ralph Waldo Emerson and then I wanna read uh, for our meditation something that we've done before. Cultivate the habit of being grateful for every good that comes to you and give thanks continuously. And because all things have contributed to your advancement, you should include all things in your gratitude. So eventually we can look at everything we can have we can find clarity in, in everything that we may have needed to bottle up, but we have to do it gently. So what I wanted to read is our gratitude. So, so I'm, what I wanted to share was gratitude can be one of the ways we look at things from our past, just, or we look at things that we don't ordinarily look at. So because it ties in so beautifully with nature and the elements, and uh, we can uh, give thanks for nature at this time of the year when we're turning into, from one season to another, um, we can be grateful for things just as they are. So I want to read for our meditation the Canticle of Brother Sun and Sister Moon by St. Francis of Assisi. I really like this. 
So let's do this. This is usually used as part of a, um, well, it's, it actually says at the bottom, it's from, there's, this is used in the encycl encyclical on climate change that Pope Francis began. But this, uh, we know St. Francis as uh, a medieval, uh, not a monk. He wasn't a Catholic monk. He was a lay person, but he, he became a saint because of everything that he did and taught. So let's, why don't you get into your meditation posture and let your body relax. And so when I was looking at this again this morning, I, I immediately wanted to use it to talk about gratitude and the coming holidays and um, don't, don't be worried about offending anyone if you decide to stay at home. I don't think you, I think maybe it's good to realize that some people might be offended, but I don't think we have to be apologetic about it. I think we can lovingly tell our friends and family that we're choosing to stay at home that day. You can tell them that you have to go to a, an all day getting up at six in the morning meditation retreat and you'll be doing it till uh, nine o'clock at night. And if they'd like to come and join you at your place, invite them, <laughs> maybe that's the way to deal with it. So every time he talks about uh, in, this, in this, we'll call it poetry, but when, it's, when it says, praise be you, my Lord, uh, we can even think of that as that's the gratitude. That's an expression of gratitude. He's praising the Creator, and uh, so we can we can hear the words that might be different than the way we talk about uh, the creation of all things, but it's it's the same intention, I think, the same meaning. Most High, All Powerful, All Good Lord, all praise is yours, all glory all honor and all blessings. To you alone, Most High, do they belong, and no mortal lips are worthy to pronounce your name. Praise be you, my Lord, with all your creatures, especially Sir Brother Sun, who is the day through whom you give us light, and he is beautiful and radiant with great splendor. Of you, Most High, he bears the likeness Praise be you, my Lord, through Sister Moon and the stars in the heavens. You have made them bright, precious, and fair. Praise be you, my Lord, through Brothers Wind and Air and fair and stormy, all weathers moods by which you cherish all that you have made. Praise be you, my Lord, through Sister Water, so useful, humble, precious, and pure. Praise be you, my Lord, through Brother Fire, through whom you light the night, and he is beautiful and playful and robust and strong. Praise be you, my Lord, through our sister Mother Earth, who sustains and governs us, producing varied fruits with colored flowers and herbs. Praise be you, my Lord, through those who grant pardon for love of you and bear sickness and trial. Blessed are those who endure in peace. By you, Most High, they will be crowned. Praise be you, my Lord, through Sister Death, from whom no one living can escape. Woe to those who die in sin. Blessed are they she finds doing your will. No second death can do them harm. Praise and bless my Lord and give him thanks and serve him with great humility. We have so much to be thankful for and grateful for.
Try to be this week grateful for everything from your past, even the things that are difficult to look at. They've molded us. They've made us who we are today. So our acceptance of them is really important. Recognize and accept and keep moving forward. Don't get hung up with it. Remember to come back. If, we, if you want to use RAIN, remember to look at it, investigate it, go ahead and accept it <clears throat> because you know you can come back, maybe revisit it again, but there's no, no need to keep it uh, out of recognition. That then becomes delusion. So work with these difficult parts of our past and then eventually you'll be able to be uh, grateful for all things. And that gratitude, all we have to do is look, look outside a window. And if you're looking out like I am with birds and squirrels and trees and the wind blowing and everything feels, even the, even the trees feel alive even though the leaves have all fallen, we can be grateful for all things. And that gratitude is what can also get us through difficult times. So thank you so much for being part of my practice. Uh, keep sitting if you can, and I will talk to you again tomorrow morning. Thank you so much. <clears throat>